One final note about a simple normal and inferior goods before we get on to the next topic. So here I've drawn an income expansion path <coughs> with three budget constraints. The point I want to make is that sometimes you can't classify a good as being only normal or only inferior. It'll vary depending on what the income is, what the income level is. So for example, in this in this case, the initial consumption of X with the lowest level of income is this, the next consumption of X is this, and the last consumption of X is this. So the consumption of X has increased with every increase in income. And therefore, in this example, X is normal. So X is a normal good. But if you look at Y, the initial consumption of Y is here. The second consumption of Y, you can see from this point, is lower. So that increase in income from the smallest budget constraint to the second led to a decrease in Y. So there, you'd say that Y is inferior. However, when you move from the second budget constraint to the third budget constraint, you go from the second point, which is this one here, to the third point, which is here. So the increase in income generated by moving from the second to the third budget constraint corresponds to an increase in Y. So there you'd say that Y is normal. There's no contradiction here. Y is inferior only between the first and second budget constraint, and Y is normal only between the second and third budget constraint. So, again, as I said before, a good doesn't have to be only inferior or only normal. It could be inferior over some income ranges and normal over, over the other income ranges. The next topic I want to talk about is a different way of classifying commodities. Instead of talking about normal or inferior, these two terms are luxuries and necessities. Defined as follows. A good is a luxury if when you have an increase in income, of a certain percent, let's say 1%, then consumption, let's say of X, goes up by more than 1%. And necessity starts out the same way. An increase in income of 1%, then consumption of X increases by less than 1%. So here we're talking about percent changes in income and percent changes in consumption. Whereas with normal and inferior goods, we didn't mention the word percent at all. One way to express this is in the following kind of notation. Percent change in the consumption of X, and we can compare that to percent change in income. So I'm using the little triangle, which is the capital Greek letter delta, to be change. So we have percent change in X and percent change in income. Expressed in this way, a luxury is defined as follows. The percent change in X divided by the percent change in income is greater than 1. If it were equal to 1, then the percent change in X would be the same as the percent change in income. But the definition of luxury says that, that you have a greater percent change in consumption of X. You see this says here, more than 1% change in consumption of X when income increases by just by 1%. So the 
percent change in x is bigger than the percent change in income. And hence this fraction, percent change in x over per change, percent change in income, is larger than 1. Necessity has percent change in x over percent change in income being less than 1. So if income changed by 1%, then the consumption of x would have to change by less than 1% in order to make that fraction less than 1. We don't really talk about the case where this fraction is exactly equal to 1. In other words, where the percent change in, in x over the percent change in income is equal to 1. Because it's highly unlikely that that number is exactly equal to 1. The notation I will often use is a little bit more precise than what I've just shown you. The, the denominator stays the same, percent change in income. But I'll usually write the numerator in the following way. Percent change in the quantity demanded of x. This is particularly helpful if there's ever any sort of confusion about whether we're talking about a demand or supply. Now, of course, here we're talking just about demand because we won't be talking about supply for a long, long time yet to come. But just to be more precise, you, one can express, instead of just change in x, uh, change in the quantity demanded of x. So this is a, in the numerator you have a capital Q with a superscript, which stands for quantity, superscript of D, which stands for demand, and subscript of x. So in the luxury, this would be greater than 1. The necessity, the percent change in the quantity demanded of x divided by the percent change in income would be less than 1. Let's clarify how this is different from inferior and normal. A normal good has the following property that the percent, no, I'm, I'm sorry, that the, the change in the quantity demanded of x divided by the change in income is greater than zero. And an inferior good has a property that the change in the quantity demanded in x divided by the change in income is less than zero. So when income increases, the two denominators, the change in income, is going to be positive. With a normal good, if the denominator is positive, and you want that whole fraction to be positive, then the numerator also has to be positive, which means the change in the quantity of demand of x has to be positive, and that's what you have with the normal good. When income goes up, you buy more of it. An inferior good, when you have a positive denominator, income goes up, then the quantity demanded of the good falls. So the change in the quantity demanded of x is negative. So in the example I just gave, if you have a positive change in income and a positive change in quantity demanded of x, it's normal. A positive change in income and a negative change in the quantity demanded of x is inferior. Now, of course, that's just an example. You can also have income f falling, and things have to change appropriately. But these definitions that I've written here stay the same. A normal good is defined to be a good that has the property that the change in the quantity demanded of x divided by the change in income is positive, and an inferior good, the change in the quantity demanded of x divided by the change in income is negative. So you can see that as a contrast with normal and inferior, that, and with luxury and necessity, with normal and inferior, we don't have any percent signs in there. It can be helpful to think about the relationship between normal and inferior on the one hand, and luxury and necessity on the other hand. Let's do that with a number line. Oops, that's not the color I wanted to use. And we can think about, let's just think about graphing the change in the quantity demanded of x divided by the change in income, and I'm going to put 0 here. So to the right, it's positive, and to the left, it's negative. Hence, to the right, I have 
normal goods. And to the left I have inferior goods. Now a luxury is certainly a normal good because when f when you have a luxury, when income goes up, you buy more of it. In fact, you buy a lot more of it. So you certainly buy more of it. So a luxury is going to be a, t a certain type of normal good. There are other types of normal goods that aren't luxuries. They have the p and 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 s and so th they would be necessities th that uh, you have an let's say a 10% increase in income and if the quantity demanded goes up but by less than 10% then you get a necessity. As a consequence luxuries are a subset of normal goods. They're goods that you could think of as being really really normal although that's not a correct expression. Uh, and and necessities are everything that's not a luxury. So you can see in the diagram there are some normal goods that are necessities. All of the inferior goods are necessities. Because a necessity says when income goes up by one percent, you buy your purchases increase by less than one percent. If your purchases have gone down, they certainly increased by less than 1%. They've actually increased by a negative number, which is certainly less than 1%. And therefore, an inferior good is a necessity. So this number line shows the relationship between these four categories. Luxuries have to be normal. Inferior goods have to be necessities. A necessity can be either an inferior good or a normal good. You, you can't tell. And normal goods are divided between. Some of them are necessities and some of them are luxuries. So this can be a, a helpful diagram to think about the relationships between these four categories. Finally, finally a practical application of these ideas comes from a um, a result known as Engel's Law. Which says food is a necessity. Now of course I'm not talking about a biological necessity. That's a triviality. This is an, an economic law that uses the economic definition of the term necessity. It was discovered in India after Ernst Engel, the same guy who came up with Engel curves. And it turns out that this is true in, in two different ways, cross-sectionally and in time series. Let me explain. Cross-sectionally means freeze time. Let's take one year, like the year 2010. Look across income levels. Poor people, middle-income people, rich people. What you see is that rich people spend more money on food than poor people. So as income goes up across people, purchases of food go up. So food is a normal good. But if you have a 10% increase in income, food purchases don't rise by 10%. They rise by less than 10%. And that's the definition of a necessity, that when you have a certain percent increase in income, then consumption of the good rises by less than that percent. An application of this is that in a society where you have rich people and poor people and middle income people, the group of people that are going to be spending the greatest percentage of their income on food are going to be poor people. And rich people are going to be spending more money on food, but as a percent of their income, it's going to be very small. I mentioned time series. Think about as the income of a country like the United States has risen from the 19th century until today. 
So you have the income changes, income increases. People today spend more money on food, measured in some sort of constant dollars, than people did in the 19th century because we're a lot richer than the average person in the 19th century. So income's gone up, purchases of food have gone up, so food is a normal good. It's, it's not inferior, food is normal. But looking at it percentage-wise, our percentage of income has gone up by a certain amount, but the amount of money that we spend on food hasn't gone up by that percentage. It's gone up by less than that percentage. And therefore, it's, food isn't a luxury. Food, and the opposite of a luxury is a necessity, so food is a necessity. So both cross-sectionally and in time series, Engel's law is true. Uh, food is a necessity. Policy implications. There are many states in the U.S., most states in the U.S., don't impose sales taxes on food. The Utah State Legislature has um, struggled for the past few years to determine a good policy on sales taxes on food. There is still a sales tax on food, but it's not as high as it used to be. The reason for reducing or eliminating sales taxes on food is because of Engel's Law. Because if poor people spend a greater percentage of their income on food than rich people, then if you impose a sales tax on food, you're imposing a tax that hurts poor people a lot more than rich people. A very poor person might be spending 50% or more of their income on food, whereas a very rich person, a billionaire, might spend well under 1% of their income on food. So if you impose a tax on food, you're differentially hurting people who spend a lot more of their income on food, and that means you're differentially uh, hurting poor people. So that's a policy implication of Engel's Law.